is the video lecture series of embedded system subject we are going to discuss about dma or direct memory access in this video we'll be discussing about the basics of dma the structure of a dma based system and also the dma process the various stages and steps in the uh, dma process and towards the end we'll be discussing the dif different types or the modes of dma transfer okay let us discuss about dma so dma is actually a very important topic especially if you are preparing for some uh, interviews on embedded system uh, based e recruitments and all okay so let us discuss about dma dma is direct memory access so it is a best operation that allows read and write between io devices and memory not controlled by cpu so whenever you are thinking about dma transfer or dma you should know that while uh, the memory transactions are taking place uh, through dma process then the bus control we know that the communication or data transfer is happening through buses right so the bus uh, buses or the bus control is not done by the help of cpu but the bus control that is a memory bus is controlled by a dma controller that is the most important thing so here the transactions that is a memory transactions are taking place without the intervention or without the control of a cpu okay so cpu will be doing some other operations at this time but the memory trans transactions will be taking place and the dma controller will be actually uh, controlling these transactions okay so cpu don't have much uh, role in this transactions let us see that de in detail so just know that dma or direct memory access is a best operation that allow read and write between io devices and memory not controlled by the cpu a dma transfer is controlled by dma controller just like we have discussed which requires control of the bus from the cpu so cpu is actually the master of the bus right so for all the buses in the system cpu is a master and when the dma transfer has to take place the dma controller will ask for a uh, permission to the cpu to take the control of the bus and once the dma controller is uh, getting the co the control or the permission to take the control of the bus thereafter the dma controller will be the bus master okay so this and once the dma controller is getting the bus access thereafter it will act as a bus master and then the transactions will be under the control of dma controller only cpu does, doesn't have any role okay so this is the basic process happening in dma now if you know this thing then you can study all the other concepts okay next so this is the structure of a dma based transaction there is a cpu there is a dma controller then there is devices then there is memory so these are the system buses okay now you can see that the dma controller is asking for a bus request and then the cpu is giving a bus grant so this is actually a a uh, handshaking happening between the dma controller and the cpu and this process will help the dma controller to take the control over the buses okay so the dma controller cannot just come and take the control of the buses it has to ask the cpu to give permission for taking the control of the buses right so that uh, permission giving or that uh, process of getting the access over the buses is happening through these two signals first one is best request which the dma controller will be raising the dma controller is asking uh, the cpu to give control over the buses through best request and if the cpu is permitting it it will give a bus grant signal okay so this two way handshaking is happening okay then after that dma controller will act as a bus master and then this transactions reading writing and everything between the devices and memory will happen under the control of dma controller okay next so here whatever we have discussed just now is actually written as points dma requires a cpu to provide two additional best signals we have already seen it best request and best grant okay now a typical dma controller includes the following three registers a starting address register which specifies where the transfer is to begin where the tran uh, dma transfer is to begin the starting address is stored in this register then length register specifies a number of words to be transferred through dma transfer then the status register allows dma controller to be operated by the cpu now these registers of the dma controller 
is controlled or operated with the by the cpu so for cpu there is a cpu will be controlling the dma controller with the help of these registers if the cpu wants to uh, end the dma transfer at a particular address then it will specify that in these registers okay and also the length of data everything the cpu will be controlling with the help of these registers so these registers help the cpu to control the dma controller or dma transactions okay next let us discuss the dma process we have already seen that but uh, we'll see a step by step so the best request is as say asserted by the dma controller when it want the control over the best the cpu will finish the pending best transaction see um, see when the cpu is uh, doing some processes or some transactions uh, through the bes at that time it cannot give the best grand signal because currently the cpu is using the bes right so first what it will do is it will finish off the uh, things or finish off the transactions and then it will give the best grand signal or it will give the control of bes to the dma okay bes grand is asserted by the cpu when the bes is ready or when the bes is free next the cpu initiates the dma transfer by setting the starting address and the length registers appropriately so we have discussed just now that the cpu is using the registers of dma controller to control the dma transactions okay upon becoming the best master the dma controller has control of all the signals once the best uh, dma controller is a best master the read write all these things will, is happening under the dma dma controllers control or supervision okay now after the transaction is finished the dma controller returns the best to the cpu by deasserting the best request causing the cpu to deassert the best grant okay so after this dma transaction is finished what will happen this signal see here there is a signal called best request right the dma controller will deassert this signal that is it will cancel the best request signal and at that time the cpu will also cancel the best grant and it will again take the control of this bases okay so this is the step by step process of dma transfer okay so the concept is actually very simple you should know that what all things are happening now let us discuss the modes of modes of dma operation first mode is burst mode okay so in the burst mode what is happening is the dma controller will uh, ask for the best through best request signal and the cpu will give the best control with the help of the best grand signal and once the dma controller is getting the control of the system bases what will happen is it will transfer all the bytes of data uh, in a cycle okay so the data will be transferred in a burst mode all the data will be transferred at the same time and uh before the best uh, best request or the best grand is getting deasserted the transfer will be taking place okay so it will send all the data in a burst mode through the dma so that is happening in the first mode okay now what is the problem of this uh, this type of uh, dma transaction is that even though the best is deasserted consider that the dma dma uh, has finished off the transactions and it has deasserted the bes but even though the bes uh, is given back to the cpu since the data transfer is taking longer periods the cpu cannot actually use the bes okay even though it has got the control over the bes since the transactions that is the memory transactions or the data transactions is taking place uh, that is it is taking longer periods the cpu has to be inactive okay so this is one problem i'll explain with the help of this diagram consider that uh, this dma is operating under best mode okay and what the dma has done is dma has sent all the data as a burst uh, through the signal that is through this bases and the tra data transaction is taking place between this device and memory and the data is been transferred in the burst mode okay so after the uh, transaction has been initiated the dma controller has given back the best control to the cpu but even though the cpu is getting the best control since this transactions is taking longer time 
it cannot use the best immediately it has to be inactive for some time okay so that is the first mode's disadvantage okay so just know that in burst mode all the bytes of data are being transferred at the same time okay next is cycle stealing mode it is just like the uh, burst mode only but here only one byte of data is transferred uh, in a cycle okay in a cycle only one byte of data is getting transferred all the data is not being uh, given as a burst okay so that is one difference and this mode is called cycle stealing mode here also the best uh, request signal is there best grand signal and everything is there but the difference is that only one byte of data is getting transferred in a cycle next is transparent mode here uh, the difference from the two other modes is that here the dma controller will wait uh, until the time when the cpu buses or the system buses are free okay so in the transparent mode the dma controller will wait until the system buses are free or it will wait until uh, the cpu is not using the system buses only then only at that time the dma transfer will take place during the other time when the cpu is using the system buses that is a memory based database all these buses if the C cpu is using then the dma transfer will not be taking place or the dma controller will not ask for the bus okay so that is another mode which is called transparent mode here the dma transactions is only taking place when the cpu is not using the system buses if, if the cpu is using means the dma transfers won't take place now one disadvantage of this uh, mode of uh, dma is that here the hardware has to always check when the system buses are free so the hardware should be checking whenever uh, that is when the system buses are free only at that time only when the system buses are free the dma transactions can happen okay so this is one disadvantage hardware has to always check for this okay and this is also called hidden dma transfer mode okay hidden dma it is called because the transactions is only taking place when the cpu is not using the system buses okay so it is hidden so that's all uh, about the topics now let us see some questions from dma next we are going to see some questions from dma so the first question is which of the following uh, provides an efficient method for transferring data from peripheral to memory a dma controller b serial port c parallel port d dual port so dma controller is actually a very efficient way to transfer data from peripheral to memory here the the advantage the main advantage is that the memory transactions will be actually happening in a faster way the memory transactions are happening without the intervention or without the supervision of the cpu so uh, the transactions would be very fast okay uh, quick transactions will be there there is uh, no uh, need to ask the cpu every time the data is getting transferred there is no uh, need to ask the cpu about the request and per getting the permission and all directly without the uh, permission of the cpu for every time data transfer with the help of the dpa uh, dma controller <laughs> okay next we are going to see some questions from dma uh, session so the first question is which of the following provides an efficient method for transferring data from peripheral to memory correct answer is dma controller so the main advantage of dma is that the memory transactions will be happening in a faster way so uh, if the memory transactions are happening uh, with the supervision of cpu what happens is that every time the data is getting transferred uh, the data transactions uh, has, has to ask the permission of the cpu get the uh, access of access of best from the cpu so this process will be uh, time consuming but uh, when we are going for dma uh, only the dma controller has to ask the the cpu about best request and then obtain the control over the best through the best grant once this control is uh, obtained then the dma controller will be taking care of all the transactions there won't be any intervention of the cpu or any supervision of the cpu in the dma okay so this will be happening in a faster way so the dma transactions are generally faster next question 
which of the following can be adopted for systems which does not contain DMA controller for data transmission. So if you are not having a, a DMA controller, then which of the uh, following systems can be adopted? A counter, B timer, C polling, D memory. Correct answer is polling. So if there is no DMA means uh, then the polling type uh, memory transfer uh, can be adopted. Every time what happens is the CPU will be polling the various ports and will be looking for whether there is any uh, data transfer request present or not. And if there is a data transfer request present, then uh, the CPU will be permitting that. Okay. So likewise, the polling of various ports and various uh, systems. Okay. Next question, which of the following is used to request the best from the main CPU? So the signal name is best request and it is actually the best requester. Okay. So the system is called best requester, but uh, the signal, signal name is actually best request signal. And the permission is given through best grant signal. So the two important signals are best request and best grant. Okay. Next, which of the following allows the DMA controller to select the peripheral? So options are A, local peripheral control, global peripheral control, C, address based database. Local peripheral control will help to choose or select the particular peripheral. Okay. So in this video, we have discussed about DMA. We have discussed about the basics of DMA transactions, the structure of DMA we have seen, what are the procedures or steps happening in DMA. And also we have seen the modes of data transfer happening in DMA. So I'm really hoping that you understood the concepts of DMA. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.